you know, but I think there's a lot of people out there right now that, you know, they're, they're trying to figure out, so how do I put the fire out in my life right now? I'm That's down right. and out. I'm desperate. And I'm listening to this podcast. I'm listening to this show, Sales Wolf. Tyler, JC, man, I, I, I tuned in and I don't even know why I tuned in, man. I, I can't close the next deal. Uh, my life's in shambles. And I want to I want to challenge that individual right now, just what I did, create a new story. So many times we're defined by what we currently are going through, and that's all we could see. And if all we see what's right in front of us, that's all we're going to have. And when I was at that downtime in life, you're talking about the mental state and emotional state, I remember I had to start to tell myself, you got to start to think, you got to start to speak, and you got to start to act like you're already on the other side. Yeah, if you exactly. don't, and this is great for sales. I mean, you assume the close before you close, right? People go, well, Coach JC, I can't close the deal. Like, how did you start a nonprofit and bring together over 60 agencies? It's never been done. All right, what's up everybody? This is the Sales Wolves Podcast, episode 43. I am Tyler Harris. Joseph Caldwell. Coach JC in the house. <laughs> and we are the Sales Wolves. Ow. Yes, yes, yes. All right, guys, it is episode 43, and as you can see, uh, man, that rhymed. That was weird. Episode 43, and as you can see. <laughs> We've got uh, a special guest, and his name is Coach JC. And his name's Coach JC. <laughs> there, you go. Right there it goes. Somebody drop a beat, please. <laughs> Nah, but we do have a I can very, hear you very swallowing that look. Like, that was like weird, I can, wasn't it? Yeah, it's like this thing is right on my. Uh, it's on your swallower. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we do have a very special guest here, Coach JC, and um, I was on your podcast. Man, that's been like a year, probably. Yeah. At least, at least a year uh, ago, because that was right after we moved into this office. How long have we been right. in this office? We've been in this office for a year, January, in yeah. January. So yeah. it was like right at it. Um, which was awesome, uh, by the way. I enjoyed that. And uh, man, since then till now, I've been following you on social media. And one of the biggest things that just oozes from you is enthusiasm uh, and energy. And and it's just, it's contagious, man. And so I told him we had just got done with another podcast and, and uh, the energy level was a little low. And I was like, man, this is what we need right now. We need this injection from <laughs> Coach JC to bring it in. Uh, but man, we just wanted to give you kind of an open uh, format here just to tell everybody a little bit about who you are. You can go as far back as you want. Um, and then ultimately to what you're doing today, and I know what, what you're doing is having a tremendous impact on the people uh, there in Oklahoma. So just kind of wanted to open it up to you uh, to tell your story, introduce you to the folks that are watching the Sales Wolves podcast, and then we'll kind of go from there, buddy. Awesome, man. Well, first of all, guys, I'm super stoked to, to be a, a guest on your show. I'm honored. I'm privileged. Love what you guys are doing, JC, man. Great meeting you. Uh, Tyler, I'm trying to get my beard to your level. Uh, it's no shave November, no love November in my household. My wife says, if you have that beard, you get no love. So it, it's been a rough, uh, it's been a rough November for me. I'm hoping Thanksgiving will change that. But, uh, Hey, first of all, man, I'm grateful. I'm honored. And you know, I'm just a young cat from Jersey, man. I grew up uh, down in the Jersey shore, had big goals and dreams. You know, we were, jo we were joking uh, earlier about your freestyle and, and your rapping skills, but ironically, man, growing up, that's what I wanted to do. Growing up, I wanted to be a rapper. And I swore I was going to be either a professional rapper or I was going to be an NBA basketball player. And I now let's you're seeing me. I'm the whitest dude. I'm the shortest dude in New Jersey. But those are my big dreams and goals and ambitions. You know, and I think the guests watching right now or listening on a podcast, everybody has big goals and dreams and ambitions to be uh, something in life. And for me, it was to play NBA basketball or to be a rapper. And I ended up in Tulsa, Oklahoma from New Jersey. Never say never. I said, I'll never go out to Tulsa, Oklahoma. What's in Oklahoma? And I wound up at a, a school, a university called Oral Roberts University, 
with big goals and dreams to play basketball at the Division I level. And I made one decision at that point that radically changed my life forever. Freshman year, there's the hottest girl on campus, and everybody, all the dudes are trying to get her. Uh, Playboy actually ranked Oral Roberts University, which is a Christian school, as one of the top schools to go to because the ratio was three to one every three women to one dude. So the dudes out there are in heaven. They're like, this is amazing. I'm a young cat, and guess who won? Coach JC won. Uh, but here's what I say. At that point, I got a young boy. Yeah. <laughs> At that point, I, 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 uh, coming out with big goals and dreams, I threw away my story because this young girl got pregnant. And I'm at a school where that wasn't a popular thing, obviously. And uh, she gets pregnant. And I find myself at 20 years old in a fight of my life to be a father. At 20 years old, threw away everything that I dreamed of, the big goals and dreams to play basketball. And I hit rock bottom. I was rock bottom in a 600 square foot apartment in a fight of my life to be a father. No money, no hope, desperate, down and out, contemplating if I was going to go on with life. And it was at that point that I did a few things and I decided that I'm going to either play victim and I'm going to feel sorry for myself or I'm going to create a new story for my life. And I think so many people listening right now, JC and Tyler, are probably at that point in life. They're struggling in the sales game. They're struggling in their physical body. Mentally, emotionally, they might be down and out. You know, uh, in a relationship, they might be down and out because the story, you know, if you guys like me, you have that story you create. And what happens when that story gets or shaken or rattled or you get punched in the face and life hits. And for me, I had to make a decision at that point and I made a decision. I did some strategic things at that time to pull myself out of that downtime and turn what looked like in a loss into a ridiculous win. And just to keep the story short, I went on to be the youngest strength coach in the nation at the division one level, uh, landed a job at the D one level training some of the top athletes in the world, started a, a, an outdoor fitness program that became the number one fitness program in the state of Oklahoma with now five locations, over 300 women on a weekly basis. Um, it started a sports performance facility called Dynamic Sports Development. Been plus and, blessed and privileged to train athletes of all calibers from Olympians to NBA to NFL. Uh, wrote three, uh, four books now, started a nonprofit, training first responders, um, and been able to share my story to speak on huge platforms and to share my story to help people know that your past circumstances, your past decisions, your past whatever it is, failures, don't define who you are. And that's what it was for me at that point. I had to make a decision that my mistakes, my downtime, the situation, the current moment doesn't define my identity. So I say all that not in a bragging way. I say all that not to impress you but also to impress upon you that if I did it at that downtime in life and now took it to a place where I'm winning and people say, well, you mentioned earlier, Tyler, why is coach JC so up, man? I'm, you know, I'm watching his, uh, his Instagram and he's always seemed hype, but you know, I'm high on life, man. People ask me all the time, why are you so excited, man? I, I was down and out. I was $400,000 in debt. I was thinking about committing suicide and I'm out of that downtime. And, there, and there's things I did to know that if I could do that, I have this burning passion, desire to know now that God has spared my life and I'm on a mission to help other people win. And that's why I feel like, uh, you know, some people think I'm on drugs. I drink a lot of caffeine, but it's just being high on life, man. I love it. I love it. That is man, you're not your... You are not your past mistakes. And what you did at that moment in time was you turned the page and wrote a different story. I love it. God, that's awesome. Brother. And the interesting thing about that is I've never actually thought about it as writing a new story. People, oh, yeah. people always talk about it as, you know, that I'm, I'm stuck in this place and the story that I thought where I was going to be and to where I actually am and having to change the story. But you just said, I basically, I threw that story out the window and I just started chapter one of a new story. New book. And from there began on, which is, man, that's incredible. That is awesome. 100%. Yeah. And I've actually got, that. if if, they, if the camera was panned down and one of your books is right down here, I'm pretty sure. If I can move my, uh, ah, let me get my chair moved over. Right here, boom. Yep, there it <laughs> is. Look at this guy, look at that guy. Hey! There he is. Come on. That's yes, a fit that's... first responder book, fit for duty, fit for life. That's a book I actually wrote for the first responders of our nation, so, and that's what our nonprofit's all about. How many podcasts have you, have you now done awesome. with uh, the fit for duty, fit for life? 
Um, we're, we, we just started about a year and a half ago, ago so, so we're, we're at about 40, 40 podcasts. podcasts. Yeah. That's we, awesome. we, we actually, we actually highlight, highlight first responders, first responders in, our in our nation, fire, police, fire, medics, 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 National Guard, National Guard and really just and really provide, just them, provide tools them with tools to be fit for duty, but also fit for life. And so what's your main focus so right now? What are you focused right on day in and day out right now? Day in and day out right now. Man, it's it's funny you asked that. It's funny you asked that. I got so many things going on, man. I've been blessed and privileged to coach. I love coaching. I do a lot of life coaching. I do a lot of life coaching. And then also business consulting and coaching, which I love. And coaching, which I love. Speaking, man. I, I love, love speaking, uh, man. Inspiring I love uh, audiences. Inspiring and, uh, so audiences. That's a big thing of what and, I do right now. Uh, so that's a is, big uh, thing of what speaking. I do right now. Um, I'm actually is, uh, taking a little speaking. time off the rest of 2017. Um, I'm actually taking a little time off the rest of 2017. The rest of 2017. But then I'm going to get back out with the family. And I speak but in churches and corporations. Back in 2018, I speak in churches and corporations. Uh, agencies. Uh, and agencies. Uh, the nonprofits are really big on my heart right now. We got a big problem in our nation. The really big on my heart right now. We got a big problem in our nation. We're losing in life. We're first responders. So that's big on my heart right now. We have uh, so that's community being on my heart right now. We, we have a, a, an online we community take, called FFR uh, basically the work beats, the mental conditioning, the physical uh, conditioning, the, the work the, the, the mental conditioning, the physical conditioning, and all the tools the necessary to win in life. Physically, side of it, mostly and all the tools necessary to win in life. We take it and deliver it to the first responder on a daily basis. Financially, so they're just giving everything they need to be their best on the job and also off the job. So they're just giving everything they need to be their best on the job and also off the job. So that's a big thing I'm doing right now as well. Man, that's fantastic, and that goes right in line. I didn't even know he was doing that. But uh, one of the things that we've seen, because we work with first responders across the country, we, um, we sell life insurance in that arena, but one of the things that has been heavy on our hearts and that we see nonstop is, is PTSD is so much more rampant in the first responder community than even our military because usually they'll see in a day what a what a what a military member will see in a year I mean, and and they just and they just keep burying it down and I don't care how many firefighters or EMS guys I've sat with every single one of them has that one story that haunts them, that they wake up thinking about, they go to bed thinking about. Um, it usually involves a kid or an accident or something like that. And uh, and then every single policeman as well, they all have that one call, that one call that haunts them. And um, and so we've actually started a, a nonprofit as well that's been heavy on my heart, uh, First Responder Benefit Association. And we're going to, when a, when a, when a first responder is killed in the line of duty, we're tired of seeing uh, the agencies and their friends have to hold bake sales so that the spouse and go can GoFundMe pages can, and GoFundMe pages so the spouse can even can take care of the funeral or can or, or can pay the light bill or whatever. So we're starting that nonprofit to step in the gap between death and when life insurance money shows up. Okay, because a lot of awesome. times, a lot of times that's three to six months, a year, two years later when the money shows up, and so we want to be the ones that step in there and help help bridge that gap, not just financially. And so one thing you said really lit my fire is is the emotional side of that. So when a first responder dies in the line of duty, that creates an emotional ripple effect with all the guys that serve with them, the girls that serve with them, and in their family. And so one of the things we want to do when we step in there. Is and and I'm looking for a way to to partner with somebody on that is to provide some form of counseling, mm -hmm. um, where you can where you can help people get through that grieving period, um, and move on. It's amazing, man. And here here here's the thing. I mean, what you guys are doing is big and it's powerful, and I think it ties in with what we're doing. And if you're listening right now, somebody might be saying, "Well, why are we talking about first responders?" You know, I want to talk about sales, but I think this is a good, valuable lesson for anybody listening because I think human beings in general, and we, we hold so much in, right? Mm -hmm. You do, I do as men. We have so many irons in the fire. You know, you're trying to sell, you're trying to make money, you're trying to be the dad of the year, husband of the year, you know, man of the year, and you're trying to live up to, you know, if you follow the Bible, you're trying to live up to what the Word of God says, and we have all these standards and expectations, and when we fall short, Sometimes we don't know how to cope. And in the first responder world, I'll never forget the day. It was 2016 of April. I pulled up to the facility, and we train now over 500 first responders from close to 60 agencies on a daily basis all throughout the day. 
We provide them the physical conditioning, the mental conditioning, the chiropractic care, everything they need. But I'll never forget that day because it was a little different, JC and Tyler. I pulled up and I got a text on my phone and it said, hey, coach, I need to talk to you. And I said, yeah, what's going on? I said, can I call you? I picked up the phone. On the other end, it's one of our police officers in Tulsa. He goes on to tell me and ask me if I heard the news, how one of their very own took their life that day. And I remember that day when I sat there, I'm usually not lost for words, but I sunk down in my truck and I said, you gotta be kidding me. How does this happen? How does the finest and the bravest, the baddest and the toughest, one of our heroes that are keeping our streets street safe and secure so you and me can do what we do every day, how do they take their own life? How does it get to that point? So I remember that day when I walked in the facility, I was greeted by that same individual. And I gave him a big hug, gave me a hug, we had some tears, and I said, man, what can we do? Prevention is the best medicine. Best medicine. And life insurance is great. You know, but I think there's a lot of people out there right now that, you know, they're, they're trying to figure out, so how do I put the fire out in my life right now? I'm That's down right. and out. I'm desperate. And I'm listening to this podcast. I'm listening to this show, Sales Wolf. Tyler, JC, man, I, I, I tuned in, and I don't even know I tuned in, man. I, I can't close the next deal. Uh, my life's in shambles. And I want to I want to challenge that individual right now. Just what I did, create a new story. So many times we're defined by what we currently are going through, and that's all we could see. And if all we see what's right in front of us, that's all we're gonna have. And when I was at that downtime in life, you're talking about the mental state and emotional state. I remember I had to start to tell myself, you got to start to think, you got to start to speak, and you got to start to act like you're already on the other side. Yep. If you don't, yeah. and say, this is great for sales. I mean, you assume the close before you close, right? People go, well, Coach JC, I can't close the deal. Like, how did you start a nonprofit and bring together over 60 agencies? It's never been done, right? How did you go into police stations and, and fire stations and bring this whole city together? You guys know that wasn't an easy task. This is a very right. closed niche. They don't just let anybody in. No, but you assume the close. You start to think, speak, and act as if you already have it. That's what faith is. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. And you can either operate in fear or faith. Faith says, you know what? I might not have the most confidence right now. I might be a little scared of the situation right now. My marriage might not be where I want it to be right now. My financial, my, my checkbook when I open up is not where I need to be right now. But you know what? I'm going to start to think, speak, and act as if I'm already on the other side. I'm gonna, I might be losing right now, but I'm going to start to think, speak, and act as if I'm scoring touchdowns. I'm going to start to think, speak, and act as if I'm closing deals, as if my marriage is better. And that's kind of things where we went in the mental game to train these first responders to say, hey, if you continue – to dwell on what you're seeing every single day, what the media is saying, you're going to stay stuck. Right. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. And what you're saying there, when you said you, you can either choose to operate by faith or fear, and then what you went on to explain was actually you can either operate by sight or by faith. And see what people see is 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 bad marriage, can't close the deal, can't can't make this happen. But what they need to see is the other side of that. And uh, because those things we were talking about this before, we just had a training and and I love I love teaching from stories from the Bible. I mean, I love doing that. I'm about as rough as you'll come around. I mean, I drop the F bomb every other word and Tyler gets so mad at me. <laughs> but, you, but you haven't even dropped it once today. I know because I'm I, you said Oral Roberts University, and I was like, Fuck, I can't say that today. <laughs> but, I, but I also said Jersey, so you're right. going to say I'm from Jersey. Yeah. I'm going to start dropping that box just for fun. Yeah, just for fun. <laughs> but uh, we, were, we were talking to people, and... And we were talking about those those struggles and those challenges and how people can actually see those differently. And, and, and like King David did, when he had his Goliath, that was his start in life. That was his start in life because he saw the other side of Goliath. Does that make sense? Yep. Like, and that's when, that's when he went the king route, you know? So it was, it's fascinating to, uh, to sit and talk about that, but you can either choose to operate in faith or sight what you see around you. So that's, that's fascinating. Well, and, man. I and, love and, I, and I use, I use this story all the time because people, you know, a lot of people I deal with, they love sports, they love athletics, but Muhammad Ali, one of the greatest boxers of all time, you know, if you ever read his book, he, he said something that he used to stay stand, stand in front of the mirror and you guys probably heard this and he used to shadow box shirt off and he'd say, I fly like a butterfly. I sting like a bee. And we were familiar with that part of the story. But what he also used to say is he used to say, I am the greatest 
And he believed that. He said, "If I believe that if I started to tell the world that I am the greatest boxer of all time, that I would convince the world that I'm the greatest boxer of all time. And we look at that and we say, well, that's pretty cool. It, arguably so. He became the greatest boxer and he, and he convinced the world he's the greatest boxer. But the part we miss a lot of times is who did he convince more than anybody? Himself. He convinced himself. He convinced right. himself. And so many times our words steer the direction of our lives. And some guys right now that are watching or listening are probably saying, man, I, I, I haven't closed a deal. I haven't, I haven't been able to sell my wife. I'm being the best husband. I haven't, I, I'm just losing right now. And I, I know without a doubt, when I was down and out, $400,000 in debt, in a fight of my life to be a father, contemplating suicide, I had to condition my mind to not go by how I feel at the moment and not right. act how I feel. But I had to continue to tell myself, Coach JC, you're going to be dad of the year. Coach JC, your daughter's going to live with you. Coach JC, you know what? You're going to come out of this. And I had to condition myself by my words. And if you're watching or listening right now, you might not be closing the deals. Your life might not, might not be where you want it to be. And I just want to challenge you. Check your words every single day. So many times we wake up, we say, I'm broke. I'm fat. I'm ugly. Oh, I don't know if I'm going to close this deal. And we operate in the fear. And the best way to build faith, if you're talking about the Bible, the best way to build faith, faith comes by hearing. Thank so you. starting today, like I did, you have to become the best salesperson in your life. We could talk sales rules all day, but you got to become the best coach. You got to become the best teacher. You got to become the best preacher. And you got to sell yourself every day that you're going to close the deal, that you're going to win in life, that you're going to make the money you deserve, that you're going to be the dad you deserve, they're going to have the business you deserve, they're going to have the body you deserve. And that's how you train your subconscious mind. You don't want to talk faith. You might be watching, listen right now and say, well, I don't believe in the Bible. I don't want to. That's fine. But you know what? That's how you train your subconscious mind. You start to tell yourself over and over that you got something and you'll eventually take purposeful action to go and get it. And you'll look back and say, well, what did it start with? It started with what I was speaking, what I was confessing on a daily basis, just like Muhammad Ali. That's right. And you know what? We had uh, we had a guest on our podcast that came on, Tom Shea. Yeah. And he's a 23-year Navy SEAL. I don't know if you've seen some of his stuff. He wrote Unbreakable yeah. and has done some training with us. And and one of the things that he said, it's it's not even tied to the Bible, right? He, he, he didn't even pull this from the Bible. He pulled this from combat, was that everything in your life is driven off of internal dialogue what you've convinced yourself and what you tell yourself and uh, and he said he said he's seen a 300 pound person set a 200 pound goal right and they'll go from 300 pounds down to 250 but if they didn't change their internal dialogue 250 is about where they get because their internal dialogue was i am fat and so they yeah. boom go right back to 300 because the human condition declares that we are going to create problems in our life i mean that's going to happen and so internal dry dialogue drives that one way or another it's fascinating to talk to him about that being in a being in a in a in a combat situation so and, and we've talked a couple of times here uh coach jc about um about being in a fraudulent environment and about when you are trying to do something that you've never done before and in your situation, what you're talking about is when you're trying to recreate uh, a new story uh, and then the situation that you're in, get out of it, that if you're doing that with the confidence of I am the greatest, with the confidence of I will have the best body, with the confidence of, confidence of I will be the best this, 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 and this, but coming out of a situation where it doesn't appear that way, then that creates a fraudulent environment. And, and talking about how being a fraud is a good thing because it means you're op operating out of a level of confidence that you will do that even though it doesn't look like you have the ability to do it. You have the confidence that you will be able to do it. But what you're saying is then it, the incredible thing is being down the road oh, yeah. however many years and being able to look back when now you became what you were trying to become and to look back at that person and, and it's almost like, huh, the audacity. The audacity. <laughs> that that person had <laughs> to say that they would get to where I am now yeah. when they had nothing. nothing and no reason to keep moving. I used to sit and talk to Jeff and Nathan and I would be like, look, we are going to be millionaires. We are going to be millionaires. And, and literally Jeff was like, 
you are on Medicaid. <laughs> <laughs> you know? and, 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 uh, and so that first year, the first year I ever broke $100,000 was only five years ago, I think. And that first year I broke $100,000, I saved 90 something thousand of it. And, uh, and, and I paid it because I had to pay everybody yeah. off, yeah, right? Yeah. So, because I owed everybody money. The only reason I didn't owe Coach JC money is because I hadn't met you yet. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and I mean, it was the first year I broke 100,000, made 318, I saved 95,000 of it. And that was the first year that my accountant was like, you know, you gotta, you gotta pay taxes. And I was like, do what? <laughs> like, you actually have to write a check. And, 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 and so he said, yeah, you, you owe, you, you owe $90,000, $95,000 was right in there. And this was around Christmas time. And I had to stroke a check for everything I had saved. And literally mm. I thought about it in my head. I was like, well, my knee surgery cost about 40,000 on Medicaid. So I guess I just paid that back to the government. <laughs> you know? and, uh, and, and my feelings were hurt then, but, but, uh, but coming out of that and then just watching how the money comes. And when you, when you start getting in that, that mindset, I was already in that mindset that I was going to be rich. Like I came from poor, but I used to tell people, I'm going to be so rich that I'm going to make rich people are going to, when they find out how much money I got, they're going to throw up. <laughs> like, they're going to get sick. And, and, but I thought that as a little kid. I don't know where that came from, but, it, but it's something that's worked in my favor at least the last five years. <laughs> but, huge. Yeah. And, huge, with, and with what you're doing with first responders, it I is obviously it's close to our heart, but it's so important, especially in law enforcement lately, because God. the reality is, and, and there's a book, some of the stuff that you hit on um, reminded me of this uh, new book by Lewis Howes, The uh, Unmask- is the Mask of Masculinity. I don't know if you've seen that yet. I've uh, seen it. I haven't read it, but I, yeah, I know what you're talking it's, about. It's, about. it's just about vulnerability, right? And, and, and eliminating those masks that we put on, the masks of being an athlete, the mass of being a, a first responder, the mass of being a coach and all these different things. It's unmasking those and getting down to the actual, the vulnerability of who that person really is. Um, but the reality with first responders is they can't, because of the environment that they're in, they can never take that mask off. No, they can't. And even those that are going through um, depression and going through these terrible things, if they talk about it, they'll, they'll literally get their gun taken away from them. Yeah, they can't, they can't be at work. Yeah, and <laughs> so know? it creates this environment where it's extremely difficult to yep. be vulnerable and actually tell people about the struggles that you're going through. So to be able to have that that outlet um, is uh, it's everything uh, to yep. those people. And, and man, people, don't, people just don't realize that when you're on a routine traffic stop and you're walking up to a car and you don't know if that's going to be the last, last time that you ever did it, um, people don't realize what those people go through on a daily basis. That's why we're so passionate about it because we want to get out there and just show them our appreciation. And we're fortunate enough to be able to do that all over the country and tell these people, yep. like, hey, there's a lot of stuff out there telling you why you, you know, why you shouldn't be appreciated right now. But we want to stand up here and tell you that, man, we have the utmost respect, appreciation, admiration for what you guys do. And so, I'm, man, I'm so grateful for what you do with those guys. Um, and I've been watching it over the last year, and it's incredible. It's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for that, man. We're, we're grateful, man. And, you know, it's something you said resonates with me is, you know, I think everybody, just human beings in general, we steer away. A lot of times, what do you do as a human being? You go to what's comfortable, right? And you steer away from what's uncomfortable. And I think that word accountability, you know, is in a vulnerability, you know, for me, man, I really believed I was going to do everything in my own willpower. I was going to be a rapper. I was going to be an NBA basketball player. And it took me hitting rock bottom to realize I couldn't do it on my own. I had to surrender some things and say, okay, I'm going to be vulnerable now so I don't end up in a situation like this again. And that's hard for dudes. That's hard for men in general. But it's even harder for first responders because now I might lose my job. And I think the coolest thing that you could have in life that could be a game changer for you is a guy or a gal, somebody in your life, all right, that's the same sex that you could be real with. Somebody that's not going to tell you always what you want to hear but what you need to hear. You know, and I had to have those people in my life at that time. And we provide that for first responders. Everybody that comes to our program, you get a first responder teammate you do life with. No one does life alone. If you want to do life alone, sorry, you can't do our program. And, it's, and we have a system set up where we invade your life. We talk about physical, mental, emotional, spiritual. We talk about all the crazy stuff, the addictions, the adultery, all the things you might not want to talk about. Now, it's confidential. But you have that guy filing your life that says, it's not okay you're cheating on your wife. 
It's not okay that you have this addiction. It's not okay that you're cheating, you're stealing. None of these things are okay. But a lot of times when we can hide stuff and it doesn't have to bump, come transparent, you know, that's a lot of times it causes the internal conflict, right? right. Because I don't want to be this person. I want to be somebody else. And I'm dealing with this internal conflict all day, every day. And all of a sudden it eats me away emotionally to a point where I don't know how I never released it. And I have no idea how to cope and I kill myself. I turn to pills. I turn to alcohol. I turn to addictions because I can't live with myself because I've made these mistakes. And I was there. And it took me being vulnerable with somebody to say, JC, look, we're going to talk on a weekly basis. We're going to talk on a daily basis. You can text me when you're dealing with this. You can text me when you're dealing with that. And that's one of the things that I, we forced. We forced the first responders when they come to our program to do this. I can't tell you how much resistance we took in the beginning. Like, you don't know me. I'm a cop. I said, you don't have to do the program then. <laughs> you know, yeah. and all of a sudden, now they're saying, man, this changed my life. And you know what? I'm more fit for duty. Hopefully, I'll never need this, this insurance till I, till, till I pass away at 80 or 90 years old because I'm fit for duty. But at the same time, I'm fit for life. And that's the question I pose. If you're a salesperson, if you're a first responder, what good is it? If you're winning on the job every single day and you're closing all the sales and you're making 300, 400, 500, a million dollars a month or, or a million dollars a year, or, or you're a first responder and you're fit, but you're losing in life. What good is that? What good is that if your identity is defined by the next sale? And that's where these first responders so many times, the human beings, we fail, Tyler, JC, because we are so caught up in what we do, but not in who we are and our identities. You know, in closing a sale, our identities and being a first responder, police officer, fire, that's not who you are. That's what you do. And if what you do defines who you are, you'll come up short all day long. I know it because it's the NBA basketball player that I just dealt with that was making $10 million a year and he doesn't listen. He doesn't listen. Now he retires, throws away all his money and he's going through divorce and he says, oh my gosh, I don't even know what to do. I don't have an identity. I don't even know who I am. I don't, because basketball was everything. That's it. So if you're watching or listening right now, that's my challenge. You might say I'm a sales guy, but that's not who you are. That's what you do. You sell, but who are you? Just like every successful business has a brand. Who are you? What's your core values? What do you stand for? What are you about deep down inside? And those are the things that will drive you to be successful in life. And you know what? It was only at that time when I became vulnerable, I knew really who I was and what I was after, and why I did what I did, that I was able to go on and do good things. Because all the other stuff I was able to throw off, the chains, the weight that I was dealing with, trying to hold all these things in, and fake that I'm being somebody else. People say all the time, why are you so enthusiastic? I, I can't help it. If I was to sit here and be monotone with you, I'd be living a lie. It's not my personality, it's not what I do, I can't do it. My wife tries to turn off the house, my daughter's 16, she's like, yo, dad, I'm having a party. Everybody likes you, but it's kind of getting embarrassing. Went all day. It is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, there was something that you said there that was so important. And, um, and you talked about, you know, the affair, the addiction of this. Like, it's not okay. It's not okay. But one thing that uh, this church that I went to for a long time would always say is it's okay not to be okay, but it's not okay to stay that way. That's right. And Ooh. and I th and I think what you just said is so important about having someone of the same sex that you can just open up to and talk to. Are you gonna and give me a hug after this for once? <laughs> <laughs> Tyler hates you, being touched at the same time. Ty Tyler Tyler hates being touched, so I come in every day and give him a hug yeah. just until he gets this is, comfortable. In this, I'm gonna do it every day. And it's and it's and it just furthers my goal of of selling in Georgia yeah. four days four days out of the week, so I'm not. In the office, but uh, but but man, it's 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 cool for somebody like Coach JC here to say that. Like, <laughs> it's cool for him to it's cool for him to say that about about having uh, about having someone that reaches out, um, about having someone to be there. It's cool for him to say that, right? But I can remember. I don't know if you even remember this. He one day out of the blue, completely out of the blue, messaged me. I don't know if you remember this, but you messaged me one day, and you're like, "Hey man, I see you doing what you're doing on social media. I see all this stuff. Like, but there's no way, you know, that there's not stuff going on that everybody 
goes through. If you ever need somebody to talk to, hit me up. Like he hit me up with that message out of the blue. Now on that day, I was doing great on that particular day, but it had that hit me on a day that I wasn't doing great, I would have. And the fact that you sent me that message, man, means a lot to me. Um, and it's just, it's walking the walk, right? It's mm -hmm. not, it's not just, this isn't hyperbole. He's not just sitting up here with these grand ideas like, yeah, it should be done this way. Like he's yeah, living yeah. proof of that. Um, to say that to someone who, you know, he doesn't know me, um, but to be able to offer that up, just um, that, that means a lot to me. Absolutely. So, so what's your goals, man? Where are you taking things from here? Um, man, our goal with FFR Online is by the end of 2018 to have 20,000 members. That's first responders only because um, we honestly know, like I said earlier, we can change lives if we do that. Um, you know, uh, suicide's at an all-time high, depression's at an all-time high. I mean, there's big problems going on. So we've really just said, we're gonna really saturate that niche. We built some amazing relationships. So police, fire, medics, National Guard, or military, we're looking at having, by the end of 2018, minimum 20,000 members on that portal, where then every single day we're pouring into their life, the physical, the mental, the emotional, the spiritual, um, and, and, and the direction they need. Just really doses of hope but actually tangible uh, things that they could do. So that's a big goal of mine. And then um, my goal also is to uh, financially, um, I, I always, I, I love speaking. You know, I'll never forget my first speaking engagement, you know, where I got paid to speak um, in 2018. I wanna, I wanna speak on larger platforms, um, in bigger uh, churches, in bigger um, corporations. I was blessed and privileged, like uh, politics or not, like them or not, I was asked to open up for uh, Trump when he was on the campaign in Arkansas in front of 12,000 people, which That's was awesome. absolutely just electrifying. And I was able to stand on there and on stage and just motivate and inspire people with my message. And that's my goal in 2018 is just inspire a larger national audience of people to really just win in life, man. There's so many people that are neglecting the gift that's with inside them. There's so many people that are underachieving and they're not maximizing their God given talents and abilities because they don't believe they really can. And that's the message I bring. So that's a big goal of mine to speak more in 2018 and then uh, really just blow up the FFR online on a national platform. You know, Fantastic. you know what's so refreshing is, you know, there's some guys you see up on stage and they're at this this energy level on stage, and you just know when as soon as they walk off that stage, they're just back to back to their normal <laughs> self. But this guy, like whether he's on stage, whether he's on this platform right here, and I'm assuming whether he's at lunch this afternoon with his wife, it's the same. It's the same level, All day. dude. It's it's so refreshing to see someone that's operating out of their passion and purpose. And if there's ever been a single person that I've ever talked to and said this guy needs to be on stage like it's him it's him yeah I mean 100 percent so um if we well, can I'll help you, in any I'll, way with that. I'll tell you this I think what you just said is key for for the listeners and the audience because this is important people ask all the time where's the passion come from and I think these go hand in hand hear me here when you don't have purpose it's hard to have passion about something right mm -hmm. so when you have purpose it's easy to bring the passion now, I'm not telling you it's always easy. I'm telling you there's a lot of days where I don't go by how I feel and I have to fake it. I have to talk myself into it. But there's a purpose now on my life, right? So it's very easy for me to be passionate about what I do and what I say with crazy, ridiculous conviction. And even if you're talking about sales, sometimes it's hard for somebody to sell something because they don't believe in the product. And a lot of times the product that they're trying to sell is themselves and they don't believe in them. So if you're listening right now, Tyler JC, I think the challenge is, man, Find what your purpose is in life, why you do what you do, so that you can then be passionate about it. I've seen so many marriages that are burnt out because there's no purpose behind it anymore. The man, it, it, it was cool, it was sexy and fun when they walked down the aisle for the first year in the honeymoon, and then they got burnt out. On the job, we see it all the time. In relationships, we see it all the time. Financially, in business. So purpose breeds passion. If you don't have passion, it's probably because you haven't really right now defined and you don't wake up with a crazy, ridiculous fire and purpose to attack the day every single day. And you got to find that purpose to get that fire back so you can bring the passion in life. That's right. Hey, uh, I think you're, you're big on uh, Pastor Stephen Furtick, aren't you? Didn't he just recently come out to Oklahoma? Yeah, he was, he was just at our church like, uh, I don't know, two months ago. And I'll tell you this, I've never seen, I was like a Justin Bieber concert. <laughs> I, wore, I, wore, 
I usher. I usher for our church. We hit up the volunteers. They call us last minute, and they're like, hey, we're going to have you and another dude posted at the stage, sitting at the stage, looking out with, I don't even know how many people there, 15,000 people. And I'm like, what's going on? There are people trying to get at this dude like he's Justin Bieber. It was ridiculous trying to get at the stage. Girls, even dudes, grown men. I'm like, we got issues. We got problems. We're in church. But anyway, yeah, he just came. Yeah, yeah. So, so I love Pastor Stephen, man. And one thing that he always talks about is that if you're judging your potential on the wrong purpose, that ultimately will lead to frustration. And I think there's so many people out there, especially in sales, oh, yeah. that they're judging their potential in sales based on the complete wrong purpose. And that purpose can be what they're selling, but at the end of the day, it's who they're selling and, yeah, yeah. and ultimately what they what they feel inside. But uh, hey, man, we love to do this with every guest that comes on. Uh, would love to do it with you as well. We it's a sales wolves podcast. Uh, we talk about what a wolf means to us and and what a sales wolf specifically. But we'd love to hear from you. You know what what would be your definition of what is a sales wolf? Man, to me, and it's a great question. To me, a sales wolf is the answer without saying win all day. Oh, come on, baby. <laughs> come on. I cannot say win all day. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> hey. uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, for me personally, a sales wolf is being your best. And, you know, I think about it all the time because I'm always selling stuff. If it's a product, if it's a service, if it's a book, if it's a speaking engagement. But to me, at the end of the day, when you lay your head on the pillow, you've got to ask yourself the one simple question. Did I win or did I lose today? Was I the best version of me? Did I maximize my God-given talent today? So I think so many times we define and we can find sales to, all right, I'm, I'm, I'm closing a deal to make money. But I think every single day you're selling other people on who you are. But most importantly, more than anything, a sales wolf to me is you got to sell yourself. You got to sell yourself to be the best version of you every single day. And then ultimately you can be the sales wolf you need to be and get out and sell other people. But when you're not your best, when you're broken and you're not winning in life, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, you know, all of a sudden it's very hard to sell anything else. It's hard to be a sales wolf because man, I'm broken. I can't do me. So again, it brings me back to a sales wolf and my definition is I'm maximizing my God-given talent. I'm being the best version of me today. And if the best version of you today is closing 100 deals, then that's the sales wolf of the day. If it's closing 10, it's hustling, it's grinding, whatever it is to you. I think the standard and the expectation, we can't define. It's like success, right? Mm -hmm. Success to everybody is something different. But to me, it's at the bottom, at the end of the day, when I lay him on a pillow, when JC does, when Tyler does, you can ask yourself the question, was I the best version, not good, not average, not that I survived the day, but was I the best version of me? And if you can answer yes to that, then I think you can lay on a pill and say, you know, I won the day and give a big howl out and know that you were a saleswoman. <laughs> Which we do every night before. Every we night. <laughs> That's awesome. Hey, uh, so, so let everybody know where they can find you as far as social media. Uh, if you want to give that website out again, the uh, FFR online. Um, if you want to give just, where, where can people find you? Absolutely. And coachjc.com, coachjc.com. Uh, that's the hub of everything I do. Um, CoachJCBlog.com. Also, I have a blog. I, I send stuff out. FFRonline.tv is the online portal for the first responders. And then if you want to learn more about the nonprofit and what we're doing, not the actual first responder side but stuff, but the nonprofit and more of the mission, and that's FitFirstResponders.com dot org fit first responders dot org but people can go to coachjc.com anytime message me contact me um it'll get to me and i'm, I'm willing to serve uh anybody uh, that's part of sales wolves in any way i possibly can man Good deal. Awesome. Well, man, we appreciate you uh, being on here. I knew this would give me a little energy boost for the day. I know, you right? know, I was only planning on winning half the day, but now I'm gonna win all day. But now we gotta win yeah. all day. Well, hey, a couple of these hats when you send me the address are gonna be on their way to you. Yeah. And, uh, awesome. I, expect, I expect to see them on a the show soon, man. Come oh, on. Yes, 100%. Sir. 100%. Yes, sir. <laughs> hey, man, we appreciate your time. And I appreciate, again, not just what you do um, for first responders, but what you're doing for everybody, because what you're doing is super 
super important. Um, and man, I can't thank you enough for it. Absolutely. Thank you, man. Appreciate you being on here. I'm grateful, guys. So guys, thank you for the with that, man, this real. is episode 43 of the Sales Wolves podcast. I am Tyler Harris. Joseph Caldwell. Coach JC. And we, we are, are the, the Sales, sales Wolves. wolves. Ow! Ow.